street with your head down low. Only concentrating on what you know. Brother, sister, let me tell you how to change your life. From picking up change to society life. Not that money that'll make you rich. Or the gold, gold dollar that grants a poor man's wish. Only the currency that God supplies and covers up sin and gives eternal life. It's a God thing. Emancipated by Before we can walk in triumph, before we can walk as an overcomer, before we can walk victorious in the Lord Jesus Christ, walk victorious in our faith, we must know who we are. Amen. We, we've got to have we've got to have that knowledge. We we've got to understand the benefits of our covenant contract with Jesus Christ. You know, when when you sign a, a contract for insurance, when you sign a contract for a car, when you sign a contract to rent or to buy a home, when you sign a contract for anything, you've got to read the fine print to find out what your benefits are. And, and just with it, as with any contract or covenant, we must know what our rights are under our covenant contract with Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. If not, if not, every time the enemy comes in to lie to us, each time the enemy comes in, comes in to try to lead us astray, we're going to fall, amen? Amen. That's right. <clears throat> There's some of you in here have been listening to the enemy and he's been telling you how unworthy you are. Amen. He's been telling you how bad you were, and you've been listening to that. Well, as I've said in other messages, I'm going to say it again this morning. I'm tired of living down to somebody else's expectations. Amen? Amen. I'm ready to live up to what Jesus Christ has promised me. Amen? Amen. And, 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 and when you know that you're saved, when you know that you're a child of God, you, you can live victorious. You see, the devil works to keep you oppressed and depressed and suppressed. He doesn't want you to realize who you really are in Christ Jesus. He doesn't want you to get a hold of that fact. He wants you, listen, he wants you to think guttural or lowly thoughts of yourself <laughs> He wants you to believe that you can't, but I got news for you today, church. Jesus says you can today, amen, and we need to start taking that to heart. Come on, somebody needs to get excited about that, amen. You know, the, the, the devil has got the, the whole church body, and I'm talking about the church universal body of Christ. He's got, to say, he's got us thinking that we're defeated, and Jesus said that's not so. He said the gates of hell will not prevail against his church. Amen. And when you're walking by, when you're walking by faith, when you're walking and uh, giving Jesus all authority, control, and care, getting away from sin and self, Jesus will give you that victory. Amen. Amen. But you can't dabble in sin. You can't live in disobedience. Do you hear what I'm saying? There's so many of children of God today that's living in disobedience and wondering why God's not blessing them. Amen. Hello? Oh, 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 they're trying to live and do right and, and do what the Word of God says, but the enemy's attacking and they wonder why they're not overcoming because they don't understand their benefits under the covenant. Do you understand what I'm saying? One person got a hold of that. Amen. And that's what we're going to do. We're, gonna, we're talking about what our benefits are. The first thing we talked about is this. We're no longer a sinner but an heir. Amen. We've been adopted into the family of God. Do you understand Amen. that? Amen. You are now a blood-bought, born-again, adopted child of God. Amen. And God is going to see about you. He's going to protect you. He's going to provide for you. Do you understand that? Amen. The second thing we talked about, you're no longer an outcast. You're no longer an outcast. But you are now, you are now an heir to the kingdom through Christ Jesus. And then last week we talked about you're no longer under Satan's 
power. Amen. See, before you were born again, before you became a child of God, before you became an heir, you were under the power of Satan. Amen. You may not believe this, but he controls your life. He's the prince of the power there. He's, he's in control of this world today. Amen? Amen. Until. I like that. Until Amen. Christ comes again and Christ Amen. will take his rightful Amen. place as ruler of this universe and this world. Amen. And this morning after we read the scripture, we're going to go into uh, our third part of this. You are no longer under penalty of death. So if everybody's in Psalms 92, say amen. Amen. Stand out of reverence to the reading of the Word of God. Psalm 92, verse 1. It is good to give thanks to the Lord. How many of you give thanks to the Lord this morning just getting out of bed? Praise the Lord. And to sing praises to your name, O Most High. To declare your loving kindness in the morning. Did you get up complaining or declaring God's grace in your life today? And your faithfulness every night. When you lay down last night, did you thank God for His faithfulness and watching over you during the day? Amen. On an instrument of ten strings, on the lute, on the harp, with harmonious sound, for you, Lord, have made me glad through your work. Amen. Have you just looked around and seen what God's done for you? Amen. You know, we're, we're quick. Everybody look right up here. I think somebody needs to hear this this morning. We're quick to point out where our problems are. Amen. We're quick to point out the trouble spots of our life or our relationships. But, but you know something? Instead of doing that, we, we, need, we need church to be being glad for what God has done in our life. Amen. You know, He didn't have to save you. Amen. Amen. He didn't have to reach down and pick you up out of that miry clay. No one twisted his arm and made him send Jesus to the cross. He done it for one reason. Amen. Because he loved you. Amen. And what, let me tell you, if God never does another thing for us in our life, he's done enough. Amen. Amen. And we need, to, we need to be giving him thanks. We need, to be, we need to be declaring his wonderful works in our life. We need to be glad through what he's already, because of what he's already done for us. Amen. Amen. It goes on to say, I will triumph. I will overcome. I will be victorious. I will be more than a conqueror. Can somebody hear me today through the work of your hand? Somebody give God some praise in the house this morning. Amen. Church, you can't be defeated today. The only way the enemy can overcome you is if you let him. I had somebody tell me this morning, she said, you know, I'm going to go back to just rebuking him at every breath. Amen? Amen. Said, I'm tired of him coming in my house. I'm tired of him messing with my family. I'm tired of him just coming in and trying to take up residence here. I'm going to rebuke him. I'm going to anoint my home. I'm going to anoint my family. And I'm going to take authority over this thing. Do you hear what I'm saying today? And that's the kind of mindset we got to have. Amen. Amen. Father God, we thank you for the reading of your word today. We thank you for this living and powerful word of yours, God, that impacts our lives and changes us and molds us and makes us into the men and the women, the boys and girls that you wish us to be. God, use this living and powerful life today, God. A Holy Spirit, use it to impact our lives, to change us and mold us and make us, to draw us ever closer to our Savior, Jesus Christ, to give us an understanding of the benefits we have under our covenant contract with Jesus Christ. And Father God, I just pray that your Holy Spirit would be in such control here today that he would give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts to receive what you have in store for us. Holy Spirit, let your anointing begin to flow right now. Touch us, God. Strengthen us, God. Uh, God, just excite us today, Father. Holy Ghost, just come and just pour out the baptism today, Father, on each and every one of us today, Father God. Woo, God, to fill us 
from the top of our head to the bottom of our feet. Lord, I ask you, Lord, to forgive us all where we failed you, Lord. Forgive us of our sin. Cleanse us, Father, that we can stand before you now above reproach to ask for your mercy and grace. And God, I ask you to be most merciful to me. Oh, God, I just ask you, Lord, to pour out on me right now to let your words be my words, your thoughts, my thoughts, your love in my heart, Jesus, that it flows out and touches everyone in this room. Oh, God, take control of me right now. And in Jesus' name we pray and say we love you, Jesus. Amen and amen and amen. You may be seated. Give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. You know, <laughs> we got to understand, we have to understand what our benefits are under our covenant contract. Because if we don't, the enemy is going to come in and lie to us and cause us, listen, cause us to go astray. Amen. Cause us, cause us to not live up to our potential in Jesus Christ. And as I said last week, we talked about we're no longer under Satan's power. The only power the enemy will ever have over you is you are blood bought, born again, believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. If you've been saved by God's grace through faith in Jesus, I'm here to tell you today the only power the enemy has over you is what you give him. Amen. When you when you open the door and you let him in, that's when he comes in to attack. And let me tell you something, he's not always going to come in, come in like a roaring lion. Amen. Sometimes he'll try to come in as, a, as an angel of light. Amen. 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 But you've got you to be grounded and found enough in the Word of God to be able to realize what's going on. Amen. You know, that's something we talked about this morning, uh, about our, 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 our Wednesday night teenage classes and children classes. We want to ground our young people. Amen. Amen. We want our young people to be grounded in the basics of the Word of God. You know, that is, that is a big, that's a big secret, a, a mystery in the church. And, and, you know, we, don't, we just don't go back to the basics enough. Hello? I don't know why, I don't know why they don't, I don't know why churches don't want to do that. They want to go further. No, get down into the basics. Teach those basics over and over until it gets to be wrote. Amen? Because when you're grounded and founded in the Word of God, you're not blown about by every deceitful doctrine that comes along. Amen? You can stand fast and stand firm in the Word of God. You'll know that Satan no longer has any power over you. And this morning we want to talk about this. You're no longer under the penalty of death. You're no longer under the penalty of sin. You have been forgiven. You have been pardoned. Can somebody hear me? The judge of the universe has wrapped the gavel and said you've been set free. Amen. Can somebody give him praise in the house of God today? So many people, they don't get that. They're still trying to work it out. They're still trying to earn some kind of favor from God. They don't realize that when God said forgiven, He meant forgiven. Amen. When God said pardon, He meant pardoned. Amen. No ifs, ands, ors, or buts about it. And it was all through His grace. Can somebody hear me today? You can't add anything to God's grace. God's grace is sufficient. Do you hear what I'm saying? So we got to quit trying to work it out. Jesus has done it all on Calvary's cross. It's time to quit living in our past. It's time to quit bringing up those old failures. And it's time to start living in the liberty that is in Christ Jesus today. Can somebody hear me? We've got to get our minds wrapped around that. When he says forgiven, he means forgiven today. Amen? In Psalm 103, he says, For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our transgression from us. When God says forgiven, he means it. He doesn't bring them up anymore. Amen? They're gone. The only people that's ever going to bring up your past to you is the devil, your family and friends, and yourself. Amen. And let me tell you something. When you start dwelling in that past, 
And some of you are bad about picking them old sores. Mm. Ooh, boy. Some of you are bad about picking them old sores. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you something. Once God says it's over and done, well, guess what? You cannot change your past. Only thing you can do anything about it is your here and now and your future. Amen. Past is the past. It's, it's dead and gone. And Paul said, forgetting those things which are behind. So I press toward. I press on toward the high calling of Christ Jesus in my life. Are you doing that today? Uh, have you firmly realized and understand that Christ has forgiven you completely. You are now pardoned. Verse number 10 of Psalm 103 says, He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquity. If that's so, would none of us be here today? Come on. None of us would be here today. We'd all be burning in hell right now. Amen. But because he says pardoned, because he's already declared you righteous, declared you forgiven, there's nothing the enemy can do about it today. And you've got to stand up and get a hold of that and understand that today. Amen. That you are forgiven. Thank you, Jesus. That your whole life doesn't count anymore. You, you ever heard of a, a work release program? Yes. <laughs> Where people that's committed crimes and they, they go to a halfway house, and, and during the day they can go out and work, but at night they got to go be locked back up again. You know, they're only partially free. Let me tell you something. God's grace in your life, God's forgiveness in your life, God, God's pardon in your life is not a work release program. Can everybody look right up here. You need to get a hold of this. God's forgiveness, God's grace is not a work release program. Amen. Once God says you are free, you're free. You're not free for a little while and then locked up again. Once Jesus Christ says you are free, you are free forever. He said you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. He said therefore if the Son makes you free, you are free indeed. Amen. You've been forgiven. And you need to get a hold of that today. Amen? Some of us can't forgive ourselves. Amen. Woo! Some of us have trouble forgiving ourselves. Am I getting through to anybody this morning? Say amen. Nod your head. Do something so I know you're understanding what I'm saying today. You've got to realize, you got to, you can realize, if God's willing to forgive you, you've got to be willing to forgive yourself. Amen. Quit beating yourself up. Amen. Some of us are quick to beat ourselves up. Some of us are quick to put our own selves down. Amen. Hello. Amen. We got low. We got. We got low. We got low self-esteem of ourselves. But you know what? If we look at ourselves the way God looks at us, have you ever tried doing that? Have you ever tried looking at yourself the way God looks at you? God thinks you're the most precious thing in the world. Amen. Amen. See, He loves you. Amen. See, that's one problem we have. We don't love ourselves enough. We don't have any problem loving something. You know, we can forgive. Somebody come up spit in our face. We'll forgive them and we'll still love them. Because that's what the Bible tells us we're supposed to do. Well, guess what? We're to love ourselves like God loves us too. Amen? Amen. Because God thinks we're the most precious thing in the world. Amen. God thinks we're worth dying for. How about that? Amen. Amen? Amen. And once he says forgiven, once he says we're pardoned, we're forgiven, and we've been pardoned, the only way we can get shackled back down again, the only way we can get locked up again, is when we do it to ourselves. Am I getting through to somebody this morning? Say amen. amen. John said in 8, 12, Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me, are you following Jesus today? Are you walking in here? You know what that word follow means? It doesn't just mean to see where to go and go in the same direction. It means to walk in the same footsteps. It means to be so close to Him, if He stops, you're going to bump into Him. Amen? Amen. It's, 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 a, it's a walking in His footsteps. It's, it's a oneness. It's a closeness. It's a togetherness. Am I getting through to you today? Say amen. Come on. You know, He said, He who 
follows me, he who's close to me, he who's walking in my same footsteps, shall not walk in darkness. Let me tell you something. When you're walking with Jesus, you ain't going to walk in sin. You ain't going to walk under, under, under the darkness of the penalty. Amen? But you're going to walk in the light of life. You're going to walk in the light that is Jesus Christ. Can somebody hear me today? And when you walk in the light, you can't stumble. When you walk in the light, you can't sin. When you walk in the light, you can't get off in the wrong direction. Can somebody hear me today? Some of you need to get happy about this, glory to God. You see, Jesus has made us a promise. This is one of our benefits. We as long as we're following Him, we don't walk in darkness. We don't walk up under the penalty of sin any longer. We've been set free. Romans 8, 1 says this. There is therefore now. Do you understand what the word now means? Hello? Right where you stand Right where you stand. Guess what I like? You know what I like about the word now is? The word now is progressive. Now. 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 Every step you take is now. Amen. Yeah. So Jesus said, every step you take. Does, it, does anybody get what I'm trying to explain to them? Now is a progressive term, amen? It's continuing. Hello, it's a continuation. Come on, one person's getting it back there. It's a continuation. There is therefore now progressively, continually, no condemnation. Amen. No punishment. No judgment. You have been judged already by the blood of the Lamb shed on Calvary's cross and you've been declared innocent. You've been declared free in deed. Can somebody give a little bit of praise in the house of God this morning? Nobody's condemning you. God's not condemning you. Hello! You've been set free, glory to God. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. You know something? Your friends look at me. I don't care what people say about me. I done got to the point. They can look in. They can talk about me all they want. They can say what they want. They can throw whatever junk of my way. They can accuse of whatever they want. But my God knows. My God says I've been set free. My God says I've been redeemed. My God says I've been pardoned. My God says I've been forgiven. He said there's no condemnation in my life anymore. And I receive it in the name of Jesus. Can somebody give a little praise in the house of God? Some of you are still walking under that cloud of condemnation. <laughs> I bet you money when some of you get together with your buddies, the first thing you go to talk about is your old time. Hello. And they like to bring up how you used to be. You know, I don't even hang around them folks anymore, amen? Because I ain't what I used to be, thank God. Amen. And what I like about it is used to be, amen, it ain't here now. Right now? And going on into the future, there's no condemnation over me. Amen. I've been set free. Amen. You've been set free today if you know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. He said, there is no, there is now, therefore, there is now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Are you in Christ Jesus today? Amen. Are you a born again, blood bound child of the Most High God, saved by the holy sacrifice on Calvary's cross? Can you hear me today? Are you in Christ Jesus? If you look, if you got any doubt, you can get to this altar right now. We'll stop the service and we'll pray right now. We'll get we'll get you where you need to be. Amen. Don't doubt that salvation experience. If you know you've been saved. 
There is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Why does Paul say that? Because in Galatians he's going to teach you this, those that walk in the Spirit will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. See, you've got to be striving to walk in the Spirit. In other words, you've got to be striving to give the Holy Ghost control in your life. Because when the Holy Ghost is in control, He will not lead you into sin. He will not lead you into worldly things. He will not lead you into condemnation. He will only lead you into righteousness and victory and glory in the Lord Jesus Christ. Can somebody give Him praise in the house of God this morning? Why do you think Paul writes, don't quench the Spirit? Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Ooh. Sisters, brothers, hear me today. Some of you have been quenching the Spirit. Amen. Now you look at look at you, you ain't gonna quench him in my life. I'm gonna let him go. Amen? Amen. But you've been quenching him in your own life. Every time you lock up your prayer closet, don't pray in your prayer language. Those devil come to whisper you. Are you listening to what you saying? Amen. Amen. You hear what you sound like? Don't you sound so silly? Amen. If brother so and so or sister so and so hurt you, don't you know they laugh at you? Amen. You didn't turn around and tell the devil when he starts that stuff up. You ought to get out of my prayer closet. This is my place. This is God's place. You don't need to be in here. Well, God ain't give me but one word. Well, use it, honey. Amen. Well, God ain't give me but one phrase. Well, use it. Because let me tell you, if you start doing that, you're going to kick the devil in the head. Amen. Begin to walk in that spirit. You will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Let the Holy Ghost. Mm, boy, I feel like preaching right now. Amen. Then you got to let that Holy Ghost have control. Don't worry about what everybody else said. Amen. If I have worried about that, I would have stepped out of here a long time ago. Let me tell you something. People don't want to be around where the Holy Ghost is moving. People don't want to be around where the Holy Ghost is in control. Amen. Because they can't take it. It ain't you they upset with. It ain't you they got the problem with. They have the problem with the Spirit of the Holy Let the Holy Ghost have control. So what if they make fun at you behind your back and talk about you? I don't care. Because see, I know one thing. I'm not condemned anymore. I know I've been set free. Amen? I know that as long as I'm walking in the Spirit, I will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. As long as I'm walking in the light, I can't walk in darkness. Amen? I know the truth, and the truth done did set me free. Glory to God. And I get excited about that. Amen. I'm no longer under condemnation. I'm no longer under the penalty of death. Amen. Woo! I've been set free. Amen. What was that song I sang last week? I've been set free. Amen. I've been redeemed, glory to God. I've been, I've been born again. I've been, oh, bless God, He's sanctifying me every day. Amen. Amen. Otherwise, I'm getting closer and closer to Him. Amen. Amen. Not only am I getting close to the physical coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, but I get close to it spiritually every day too. Amen. 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 Praise God. There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus who do not walk after the flesh. I'm going to jump ahead of myself a little bit. We'll talk about it. I don't know when we'll finish this or not this morning. Just listen to what I'm going to say. You know your weakness. Amen. I will look at everybody in the house. 
I don't want nobody to think I'm picking on them this morning. If I had a mirror, I'd hold it up in front of myself. I'd look at myself in my glasses. Amen. You know your weakness. Amen. So why, if you've been set free, if there is that, therefore now no condemnation, if you if, if you let the Holy Spirit have control, why do you subject yourself to be tempted. Why do you put yourself in positions to be tempted? Who got somebody thinking on that one, amen? amen. I learned a long time. I know my weaknesses. And, and you know something? I know just as good and well when, they, when the devil's sitting there trying to, trying to bring up some past on me, amen? And I'll just stop. I'll just shut him down right quick. I said, uh-uh. That's gone. That ain't me no more. That, that, that ain't happening no more. I, I ain't getting caught up in that. Amen? Yeah, I'm getting pretty good on that. Because I've been set free. My mind is not your playground. Amen. My mind is on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? As he thinks in his heart, so is he. Amen? I'm focusing this on Jesus. And that's what you need to do too. Amen. Focus on Jesus. Amen. Get in. Get in him. Let me tell you something. When a storm, how many of you had them storms come rolling through the afternoon this week? Yeah. Some of them got pretty rough. Yeah. Amen? I mean, there was some wind blowing. The neighbor had a big old limb fall down in the yard. It, it was rough. Amen? But you know what? When that lightning, when I started hearing that thunder, and, 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 and I started seeing that lightning and that wind began to blow, I didn't grab my lounge chair and run out and get on the roof of my house and sit down and say, Well, I'm all right now. <laughs> Did any of y'all do that? No. That'd be the dumbest thing in the world to do now, wouldn't it? No, I stayed in my house. With the door shut and the windows locked, amen, where it was safe and I was dry. There's some of you, when those temptations come along, when the enemy go to messing with your mind, instead of staying in Christ Jesus, you try to run outside to take up for yourself. And the only thing you're doing is playing right into his hand. Ah, uh -uh, child, you get back in the house. You shut that door. You chain it. You lock it. And you stay in Christ Jesus. Amen. Quit running to trouble. I've seen, I've seen accidents on the side of the highway and because people come by rubber neck, y'all don't do that, do you? Come riding by slow way down. Go to hang out the one trying to see what's going on. Let me tell you something. That's when, that's when accidents happen because you ain't paid attention to the road, baby. Some of us, when stuff starts going on, we, don't, we have no business to be messing with, but we try to go to looking at it. We go to rubbernecking. We go to sticking our nose where it... And it causes us to crash. Get away from it. Well, let me tell you something. Well, let me tell you, it might, it might look good, it might sound good, but that don't mean it's good for you. Amen? Get away from it. If it don't line, mm, if it don't line up with the Word, you back in darkness. Amen? Get away from it. It said, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. If you're, walk, if you're in Christ Jesus, if you're walking in the Spirit, you're not going to fulfill the lust of the flesh. Romans 8, 11 said, but if the Spirit of Him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, He that raised up Christ from the dead shall quicken, that is, make alive your mortal, your mortal body by His Spirit that dwells in you. In other words, Christ, the Holy Spirit is going to tell you what to do. How are you? Right. Hey, I'm going to make it sense to you. Amen. I see so many, well, I don't know what to do. Well, if you got out on your knees and got in your prayer closet and asked the Holy Ghost to tell you what to do, Amen. let Him quicken you. Amen. Am I making sense to you? Say Amen. Amen. Because the Bible goes on to say that if we be dead with Christ, we shall also live with Him, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dies no more. Death no more has dominion 
over you. Amen. Sin, the death, the penalty, the penalty. Now let me tell you, let me, let me stop right there. These mortal bodies are going to wear out. Amen. Take my word for it. When I was 18 years old, I never thought I'd be this fat and lazy. Amen. <laughs> Not be able to get up and get around. Some, some of you young folks in here that can still cut a rug, be, be thankful. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Because the older you get, the more the joints go to creaking. Amen. Amen. These old mortal bodies going to wear out. It's a point, man, to die for once to die and then the judgment. We've already been judged. Amen? So who we really are, our soul, our spirit is going to live forever with Jesus. These mortal bodies are going to give out. We're going to be given a new body. Amen? We're going to be given a resurrected body. Amen? And thank God, because I know it's going to be better than this old thing. Glory to God. I might even be buff again. Amen? Praise God. I got the same physique I had in high school, which is all in a different place now. Amen? I hate to say this, my chest done dropped down in my drawers. Glory to God. You don't think Lisa loved me for this, do you? Glory to God. Hallelujah. I look better than this when we got married. Amen? But these old bodies wear out. But thank goodness, the moment that we were saved, the moment that we were forgiven, the, no, the moment we were no longer under the condemnation of sin, we were given eternal life in Christ Jesus. Sin no longer has dominion over us. We've been set free and we're going to live forever in the kingdom of heaven with our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Can somebody give a little praise to the house of God? <laughs> Woo! Death no longer has dominion over us. We don't have to fear death. I'll never forget, I heard Billy Graham say one time, he said, death holds no fear for me anymore. Amen. He said, now dying is another thing. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> there's a difference between dying and death. Dying is the process leading up to death. But death no longer has dominion over the child of God. Why? Because Jesus defeated sin, death, hell, and the grave at the cross. Amen? Amen. Can somebody give him praise in the house of God? That's a great and glorious promise our Lord and Savior Amen. gives us. Amen. Amen. Sin no longer has dominion over you. Death no longer has dominion over you. <laughs> but some of us forget what Christ done for us. Am I getting through? Some, I'm looking at some of y'all faces right now. If I could come lay hands on you and get a smile on you this morning. Amen? Amen. Get me some gorilla tape and put it there permanently. Glory to God. Y'all would be happy, not sad this morning. Amen? Why? Because you're no longer on the penalty. Of death. You're no longer under penalty of sin. You're no longer under condemnation. You're no longer under, uh, under the, 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 the stigmatism of eternal damnation. You've been set free. You've been forgiven. And what makes it so great, He now calls you righteous. And it's not that complicated. It doesn't take a rocket sign, scientist. Get it. Amen. You know, we complicate things with our Lord and Savior Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. <laughs> we complicate things. Those kids back there in the back this morning, they got a better grasp over, over it than some of us adults. Amen. Amen. Come on, Amen. Right. Amen. That's true. They understand it. And you know, that's the way we all look at it. Do you hear what I'm saying today? We got any real logical people in here this morning that like to analyze things? Take it apart and see how it works. Find the rhyme and the reason for every twist, turn, and open button. Amen. 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 Stop it. Amen. Amen. You want me to tell you how simple it is? 
You, you can bring it right down to the, to the basic fact this morning. Here it is. You ready? Mm -hmm. Write this down. For God so loved the world mm. that He gave His only begotten Son. Amen. That whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world. But that the world, you, you, might be saved. Might be set free. I'm not going to call your name, but I want you to hear what I'm going to say. Quit living in your past. Quit letting the enemy remind you of all you failed. You know, we're quick to remember, well, I should have done this and I should have done that. Well, that doesn't matter anymore. What matters today is where you are in Christ Jesus. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Hear these words, child of God. Behold old things have passed away. And all things have become them. Everybody hear me say amen. amen. Are you walking in that newness of life? Are you walking in the newness of life? Are you giving the Holy Spirit control? If not, you need to do so this morning. You need to say this morning, Lord, you know, I know I'm saved. I know today that I'm, I'm your child. I've been adopted. I know today that I'm an heir. I know today that Satan has no power over me. But Lord, help me remember that there is therefore now no condemnation for me. Help me remember that, Lord. That the old things of my life are dead and gone. And right now, I need to continually walk in the newness me. And if you'll do that, I guarantee you you'll start to see a difference in your life. You'll be able to handle those attacks as they come forth. They come forth. Because see, you triumph in the works of his hands. What does it say in Psalm 92? I will. See, that's a declarative statement. That's a statement of faith. I will triumph in the works of your hands. Not the works of your hands, but the works of His hands. Are you doing that today? Walking in the works of His hands. That newness of life He's given you. That fresh start. You know, God, God, God's a new old God. How many of you know that? Thank like goodness he is. He's giving you a new old walk in. Because he loves you. He wants to see you succeed. He wants to see you prosper. He wants to see you walking in the benefits of his covenant. The person that's holding you back. Because he set you free. It's time to open the door and go with God. Amen. All heads are bowed. All eyes are closed. Emotions settled, feelings tried I can't seem to redeem all the tears that I've cried 
And it seems as if there's really no way home And I've tried to find the strength to carry on I moved back so I wonder why I try to find the ways To turn back the time I find out more and more The reasons for my life The answers feel so far from me I seek the light When the waves wash ashore I feel the sand move away I look down at the footprints That haven't washed away And I feel myself lighter than the air And I see there's more than just my pair There's just one